We'll have the final program of the day, uh, which will be the vote of thanks by Honorable Deputy Speaker Thomas Hering Tekan, Tibetan Parliament in exile. Esteemed dignitaries, as we say that we meet to part and we part to meet, uh, we came here with a common goal of uh, showing our solidarity for a great cause of Tibet, and now it has, is coming to the end. When Tibet was first invaded in 1959, and since then in exile, the Tibetan community as an institution, as an individual, and NGOs, we tried to uh, tell to the world that you cannot trust China because China has a teeth to show and teeth to eat. Barely. Nobody listened to Tibet. Everyone was so mesmerized by the, uh, the show of uh, the power and kind of development at the surfacial uh, site of Tibet. But nobody could fathom the rotten, the smell that is underneath the crust of that shining uh, development. But with the advent of Wuhan COVID-19, the world has come in terms with the reality how far China's leadership can go for their end met. So we are happy that the human right and the liberty and the freedom each one of us enjoy, you cannot take it for granted. When we went for the Tibet advocacy, we told them, today it is us. Tomorrow it could be you. Today we need you. Tomorrow you could need us. And the reality is before us. With the expansionist mentality of Xi Jinping, no one is safe. No one. I mean, the dream of Xi Jinping is to rejuvenate China in 2035. So that means that China dreamed to either surpass or level their power of uh, international affairs to the United States. So that is the dream of Xi Jinping. So according to that dream, we must work harder. So therefore, I'm taking the liberty of changing the roll calling of thank you because I know that each one of you, you have contributed immensely here, leaving a lot of uh, your assignment at home, giving priority for the cause of Tibet, giving priority for the cause of human right, giving priority for the survival of a a nation, a national, that has a very rich cultural heritage to give to the world. In this turmoil of war, in this turmoil of greed, the only thing that can pacify and keep calm the heart of leadership is Buddhism, containment. I mean, if you keep on drinking salty water, you will never be contented with drinking, I don't know how much, gallons of salty water. Therefore, the need for the world community to come together. Now, Tibet is the guinea pig of nonviolence. When we talk about nonviolence, when we talk about 
dialogue with China, there are certain sections of people who think that Tibetans are very covert. It is the courage of Tibetans. It is the guidance of His Holiness that we Tibetans have drawn that courage of living with the invaders to coexist with them. We don't blame the Chinese people. They are as victimized as the Tibetans are. When we were meeting with the Chinese uh, nationals here, somebody asked me, how come you can smile and talk with Chinese people who have invaded your country, who is giving a lot of suffering to your Tibetans? And I told her, it's not the Chinese people. They are victimized like Tibetans. It's the wrong policy of the leadership, the greed of the leadership, the greed of Xi Jinping that is making the Tibetans suffer in their own land. Therefore, your coming over here and showing solidarity for Tibet will be exemplified for all the striving nations like Yukor, Inner Mongolia, our friends of Hong Kong, our friends of Taiwan. So let's pull our strength together. I mean, we, why we have come here all the way from India in America? We believe when we, all of us heard about the Speaker Pelosi speaking, when we heard the Chairman McGovern speaking, it was just overwhelming for me. When Jim McCowan made the remark that Tibet is not a flavor of the month, it's still echoing in my, in my ear. The survival of any nation or any national is not a flavor for a month. Therefore, as per this, we must all strive harder not falling into the petty local politics. Let us all pull our strength for a common cause. <coughs> so let this be the start to work and collaborate with the like-minded Hong Kong cars, Yukors, and the Taiwanese brothers. So I think from here, when we go back to our country, let us make sure that each one of us, we are going to nurture more youngsters to be the force of nonviolence, to be the force of peace, to be the force of truth. Because, as uh, Richard Kerr very rightly said, the truthfulness, nonviolence doesn't have a residue. If you, His Holiness always mentioned, if you are supporting Tibet, you are not against China. You are supporting truth. I mean, we don't disagree that China is becoming powerful, but let us make China powerful with full responsibility. I mean, it's in the interest of the world that we make China responsible. It is signatory to a number of universal declaration. It's, a, it's in the Human Rights Council but the record of China's human rights in Tibet is the lowest in the world. So this shows that we being complacent to what China says, we have emboldened them to tell more lies. Therefore, I take this my honor and privilege to thank each one of you with my folded hand on behalf of Tibetan Parliament, 
that your coming over here means a lot for the Tibet and for the Tibetans. Your coming over here has sent a message to the communist leadership that Tibet case is not forgotten, that Tibet is not alone. And with this, we are sending message to our suffering Tibetans inside Tibet that we are their voice in exile and will collaborate with the like-minded and the truthful people to come together and join the fight of truth. And let's hope that in the coming centuries, more and more people will come in terms with the the reality of the world, and be the force of the truth. And I also want to thank each and every one of you who have been here in the panel discussion, who have given a lot of contribution, who have enhanced your perspective on Tibet, your perspective on democracy. And the one most uh, pressing issue is about environment. His Holiness also always mentioned the issue of Tibet could be solved but the destruction of environment which is concerned with the humanity cannot be rectified therefore the Tibetan nomads who are having a lot of information and knowledge how to survive in the fragile Himalayan pasture, they are being recruited in the, in the buildings, concrete buildings. And they have a very fascinating term for this, ecological civilization. When you think of this ecological civilization, you will think that China is preserving environment to the extent that they are driving away the nomads of Tibet from their pasture land. But the reality is that is a means to drive away the Tibetan nomads who are the saviors of the fragile Himalayan pasture. And now, since they are being resettled in the concrete buildings, they label them as surplus human resource. They don't have a livelihood. The nomads don't have a livelihood. They have to make their kids means for livelihood for one and two dollar each. Now this is what China is trying to project to the world. <coughs> they Therefore, His Holiness has told, Tibet being the roof of the world. If the roof of the world itself is leaky, how can you fix the world as the home of humanity? So the knowledge of the nomads of Tibet and the ecological importance of the Tibet plateau needs to be understood and given a due share at the international uh, environment conferences. It's not Tibet, it's for the whole humanity because of the roof of the world is leaky. Therefore, each one of us, we must take this message from here that it is for the humanity that Tibet Plato needs to be given the importance it really deserves. So I can just go on and on, but uh, you don't need a lecture or any of this. This is just for my satisfaction that I'm crying from this pulpit. So forgive me for that. I'm not trying to educate the honorable parliamentarians. This is the cry of a Tibetan uh, soul who's trying to represent the people inside Tibet. So I thank you, each and every one, to be here when we worked out this uh, eight world parliamentarians, the Tibetan parliamentarians, the Kashak, 
the Sichuan and uh, the Minister of Information. Uh, all of us, we worked as a team, a unified team. Each one of us, we are trying, we try to figure out how best we can convene this. Therefore, I would like to thank Sichuan, Department of Information Minister Nunzinla, and all the 13 Office of Tibet representatives who have really worked hard to pull out the parliamentarians to the Washington, D.C. So without your uh, cooperation, it would not be, uh, I mean, the attendance may, may not be this convincing. So thank you so much for this. And then one thing, when we are working on Tibet, we have to work with a number of stakeholders. Uh, we worked with ICT, we worked with uh, NAT, we worked with NDI, who were really promising try, to try to figure out how best they can finance, because we are in exile. We don't have the source of income to facilitate each and everything, so we have to figure out how best we can make this possible. So in this uh, course of event, without finance, it would not be possible. So uh, NET and NTI, despite having a lot of obstacles and challenges of clauses of uh, uh, the rule of law, we try to figure out and try to figure out how best you can uh, finance this uh, WPCT. So uh, from the Tibetan Parliament, I would like to thank uh, Nat and uh, NTI. Did I miss anything else? Uh -huh. And for the friends of UCOR, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Inner Mongolia, I think it's I always tell uh, whenever I meet Tibetan people, it is not just a, a official conferences that we share. It's like day-to-day -day life. We have to have connections built. This is just symbolic, passing a resolution. But each day, each one of us, we give a visiting card, your numbers, your social media account, and we need to connect with each other every day. What's happening in your country, what's happening in Tibet, what's happening in Mongolia, and what's happening in the rest of the world. Because the world politics is very volatile. So each one of us, we have to take care of the world scenario and try to navigate how best we can showcase our suffering, our truth, and our uh, cause in the international arena. So uh, without taking much of your time, I hope I have not left anyone. And I'll beg your pardon if I left anyone. Uh-huh, Tibet Online. OK, uh, last but not the least, our drafting committee who were present in the uh, conference, at the same time you have to put your hat in how best you can draft for the uh, convention because this is the result of two days talking. So each one of you, you have contributed. And Michael, he, was, uh, he had done the maximum not only in producing the, uh, the resolution of this convention, but he was pioneer in taking out the handbook that each one of us have in our folder. So I beg each one of you to keep this handbook with you all the time. Read it, go through it. It has the purpose, the focus, and the action, what you can do. Try to figure out how best we can bring not just humanitarian sympathy and support for Tibet, but how best you can take out policies and uh, I mean, acts for the cause of the human suffering, uh, that's very important. So just now we had the uh, 
the El Salvador, Chile, and Mexico showing their solidarity uh, is the first time that uh, the, we had the representation of Latin America, but they have showed to all of us that if you have a will, you can do things together. So let's hope that each one of us, after going from here, let's figure out how best, uh, because the common people can show sympathy, but it is the parliament who build policies and who enacts laws, they can do maximum to show the real sense of uh, power to the communist regime. So with this note, uh, uh, I end with the saying that a friend in need is a friend indeed. So the friends of Tibet are here when the f Tibetans need you. So I thank you for the, from the bottom of my heart, and I thank you uh, from the Tibetan parliament and of my own uh, for a very healthy life to all of you, for a very happy and uh, a very successful political career so that the suffering of humanity can be taken care of at the highest level for all the striving nations. Thank you so much, Tashi Dele. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, Thomas Seringla of the Tibetan Parliament in Exile. So this brings us to a close of this eighth World Parliamentarian Convention on Tibet here in Washington, D.C. We have one more announcement at 7 p.m. We have a closing dinner hosted by the Tibetan Parliament in Exile. So please, everybody, 7 p.m. at the concourse room. We'll see you there. Thank you. <laughs>